Hello, this is Joe. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I made a video and mostly because the weather was bad for a while and then I had some oral surgery done on top of that. But in the meantime, uh, I was having some clear nights and so I decided that I was going to do some uh, Andromeda. And I've also been waiting for some planetary imaging parts to come in and they did come in. I got my uh, ASI 462 camera as well as the Celestron 2X Barlow. So I'm pretty happy about that, and I was gonna try some tonight. However, there's a haze behind me. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I'm guessing there's a fire somewhere to the west, and the wind's blowing it through here, and uh, the haze has gotten pretty bad. Um, it's supposed to be super clear uh, for the next few nights, and I am going to use that time to image, uh, but I'm probably gonna have to pick something really close to the zenith because uh, the smoke is going to interfere, I think, or this haze, I'm pretty sure it's smoke, uh, is gonna interfere with the image. So uh, what I decided to do was do some Andromeda. I, I had started the, actually taking some images of Andromeda with my uh, Z81, and that's uh, with the reducer on it, it's a 447 millimeters. And you could almost get the whole thing in, and then I decided that instead of doing that, uh, it would be fun to try and do a mosaic because I've never really truly done a mosaic before and I thought well this is a good way to start you know I got two panels tonight I'm going to probably finish up the moon's starting to get bright again and it's not a good time to be doing uh, LRGB with the bright moon out so tonight will probably be my last night and then we'll see what we get and I'll show you to you at the end of the video uh, let's go into the observatory and we'll talk about Andromeda so I've been fighting a lot of wildlife around here lately. Uh, I've had some mice try and come in and uh, do some damage in here. And so I've got the mouse, I, got, I had to go get some mouse poison. Uh, I've gotten uh, many wasps. Uh, they made a nest behind the tapestries that I've had in here. And I had to get rid of those. And then I put in some uh, uh, peppermint or spearmint uh, little containers. Uh, because they don't like that smell and that's pretty much kept them away. I also added this little trap back here uh, to try and catch them but all I've gotten is a couple moths so far with it and uh, but they were getting into my toolbox uh, because uh, I've got a tool chest here and it's got some drawers and they just kind of go in between the cracks inside the drawers and they lay there. It's not a nest but it's uh, like a mud nest. It looks like a mud nest but really what they're doing is storing dead or living actually spiders and I had popped a couple open and all these spiders came out and uh, if you don't know this about me I'm arachnophobic so that wasn't a lot of fun for me at all uh, I, I gotta say that that was probably one of the least fun moments I've ever had in my observatory was um, when the spiders all came running out of the little nest when I popped it open anyway I think I've got that under control and then a few mornings ago uh, I, uh, we came out with the dogs and there was a, sp on the smaller side, black bear right next to Bear Claw Observatory. And uh, we startled it and it took off back down towards the canyon. So I don't think it's a whole lot of danger, but it does pose a little bit of an issue for me because in the evening time or at nighttime, I come out here and it's dark and um, I can hear the bear, you know, you can hear his growling and, and stuff. and. Um, so it's a little intimidating. I really don't want to be out here when, uh, even though the black bear is kind of small, it's about the size of a small cedar bush. That's still pretty big. And uh, yeah, I really just don't want to mess with the bears too much. I also had some rattlesnakes uh, this year and I'm trying to remove them as far away as I can. Uh, I'm keeping the red racers and the bull snakes around a little bit to try and keep all the deer mice away uh, because they, they do control that population. So it's been a battle uh, so far this summer. Uh, the But you know, I, I, now I have clear skies finally, and I've come into other issues where it's hard to get out here because of the animals. So what I have been doing is setting everything up the best I can in the daytime or when there's light out and I could see, make sure I don't step on a snake or there's no bears going to attack me. And then I just hope for the best inside at night. I can control everything from inside and hope for the best. Unfortunately, I think that's gonna be the way it is for the rest of September. And then by October, it starts to cool down enough around here that I don't have to worry too much about the wildlife, just the coyotes and badgers like before, which I really don't have too much of an issue with. 
Uh, unfortunately, the bears, mountain lions, rattlesnakes, I do have an issue with, and apparently spiders, but we won't go there. So Andromeda, uh, I've been taking Andromeda every year uh, for the past four years in a row. And I'm going to show you some of the images that I took uh, for those uh, every year for Andromeda and including what's special about Andromeda to me is, is that it's my very first target that I ever took. Uh, it was the target that first got me in astrophotography. I wanted to take an image of it and I used a, an old uh, Rebel XT to do it and it didn't even have a live view on it. That's how old the Rebel XT was. And I managed to get an image and I'll show that to you a little later on uh, when I show you this final mosaic of Andromeda from this year. Andromeda is awesome and it's one of the most uh, friendly uh, targets for beginners. I mean, that's my very first target and I just used the camera. You can get it with just a DSLR and I do have a few images uh, with just a DSLR and a lens. So I will show you those as well. So tonight, uh, let me move this into position here. And uh, tonight I'm gonna be using the CEM120 mount. We're gonna be using the Z81 uh, William Optics and I'm gonna be using the 2600 MM Pro with uh, Antlia filters, the 36 millimeters. I've got uh, the ZWO uh, EAF and uh, also a 120 mini on the William Optics Auto Guider. And the crazy thing about Andromeda, and I think maybe that's why I like it so much, is it's actually uh, a, the, one of our closest galaxies and it's on a collision course with us and in the Milky Way. So I, th I find that pretty interesting and pretty cool. So I'm in the framing assistant and I have Andromeda loaded up in here. I just wanted to see how it's gonna load or how it's gonna frame up real quick. And I am going to do a mosaic, so I'm gonna add a vertical panel. I don't really need to add any horizontal panels because I think this will cover just about everything. What I did wanna do is change my camera rotation so that I can line it up like this. Now I've already got that <clears throat> earlier in the week I started this project, but this is basically how I did it. And I changed my overlap to 20%. It, it defaults to 10%. And I feel like I don't really get these uh, very smooth boxes like you see here. What ends up happening is, is for whatever reason, um, I get one box just shifted slightly over to the other one. So I use AstroPixel Processor for my pre-processing as opposed to PixInsight. Uh, it's just something that I've done for quite a while now. I just like the way that uh, APP does the pre-processing much better, in my opinion. Uh, I, I know, I, I hope I don't offend a lot of pics and sight purists, but it just, to me, it seems so much simpler. And uh, what I've done is, is I've put in all of uh, each panel for both, and I went ahead and processed those. And so this is what I got for panel one. And this is just the blue channel right here, but I thought I'd show you. Here's panel one and here's panel two. And the coolest part about this is that uh, I just take in all of my panel one and panel two of each red, green, blue, luminance, and HA. And then I tell it to register them as a mosaic right here. And then under integrate, I tell it to use this enable MBB. And what it is is a multi-band blending. I turn this up to about 10% even though I had 20% overlap, but I only turned that up to about 10%. And, and then I go ahead and integrate all these. And this is what I get, and, and this is what's impressive to me. So this is the, the two together. Now, I, if you remember, I told you that for whatever reason, in Nina, I'm getting a little shift on my images, but this works out just fine. And there's no lines here. I mean, I, I can't see the line between the two of them. When I zoom in on Andromeda, there's just, there are no lines. And the cool part about this is, is APP will crop where it thinks it's going to come together. You might be able to think there's a line right there, but when you zoom into it, I mean, you just really don't see it. It looks like there should be one there, but I don't, I'm not seeing it. And I think it's just because on the edges here, 
whenever it gets to the, the center, it crops everything for you. It gets rid of the, the lines from dithering and everything else. And it just makes a really nice image without um, showing those lines whatsoever. And all I did was just click a button and hit integrate and it did it for me. So it, it just takes a lot of, of work out of doing it the, the way that you would do it normally in PixInsight, at least in my mind. And this is the blue. Um, here's a shot of the green. Um, same thing. And I'll show you some hydrogen alpha because I was really impressed with the hydrogen alpha that I got from here. Um, this is it right here. And I mean, I in my very first attempt to get uh, Andromeda, I didn't even get as nice of an image um, as I did this time with just shooting hydrogen alpha so i'm pretty excited about that well, i hope you enjoyed the video i had a great time because it's the first time that i've been able to image in, in a little while uh, due to the weather and as you can see behind me uh the weather's my old weather has returned unfortunately but uh, according to the weather forecast next week's supposed to be really great and i'm going to be out out here imaging again and hopefully i'll get some planetary again uh, when I get the chance and the bear goes back in the hibernation or whatever he's going to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoy these images. I'm going to put up all of my images that I've taken uh, over the years of Andromeda so that you can see the progression that they've taken. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.